what's up? I'm Arrested here, and today I am reviewing a game with a bit of a long name. Let me go ahead and read it off here for you. It is called Siren the Forbidden Siren New Translation Blood Curse for PS4, 3, Xbox One, Red Ring, 360, and 64 GameCube, Nintendo Wii Exposed. Uh, it's pretty much about three or four different games, and I've squished them all together into one to explain it, because pretty much you have no options on YouTube as to who's going to review what. I'm the only channel that reviews games and the only game reviewer here on YouTube, so you're stuck with me. I probably know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yo, Scott, you smoking the druggy drug cigarettes? Are these your drugs? Look, Dad, it's Where not... did you get it? Dad, Answer I... me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Okay, yeah, so there's like four or five of these games. I've played each one now because I fell in love with this series because it's so creepy and the atmosphere is so good. The story is by far one of the most confusing things I've ever laid ears on or eyes on. I'm not really gonna go into the story as much. I'm gonna do my best as giving you a synopsis of it, but mostly let's focus on the atmosphere in this game because that's what's beautiful. Now, the very first time I played this game, I played it on the PS3. I played the version known as New Translation, and when I played it, I would like to say that I was delighted at how scary it was, but frustrated by how horrible it controls. Pretty much it controls as graceful as a forklift. And when you do begin to play, the story isn't totally clear. Let's see if I can try and explain New Translation in the way that I perceived it the first time I played it. Uh, pretty much you start off as a white guy with a white girl who are getting a divorce and fighting over their child while in the meantime a black guy comes up who's your cameraman and while he comes up and tells you to stop arguing then you notice that in the distance a girl is being sacrificed by Japanese people and that girl is a Japanese girl and then a young 18 year old boy runs up to stop the sacrifice and then you play as the 18 year old boy but then you do go back to eventually playing as the white cameraman guy who's still wearing the glasses that his wife got him and she's really upset that he didn't get new glasses since they were getting a divorce and then also you're trying to find your child who went missing while you guys were fighting and also then the black guy dies really early like a classic horror movie and he's no longer part of the game but then you're still playing as the white guy who's running through a messed up part of this decrepit Japanese city but also at the same time you go back to playing the 18 year old boy who's now starting to fall in love with the Japanese girl who he saved from being sacrificed and then oh yeah the, a priest shows up a priest shows up um, and she's some kind of like psychic priest halfway through and she can k kind of do spells and she uh, sets a person on fire but also she doesn't because that guy existed somewhere else at the same time in an alternate universe. Oh yeah, and there's these things called Shinbito, which, Shinbito, what a cool name, right? I mean, that sounds like the most badass Japanese name I've ever heard. Let me go ahead and look up the translation. It pretty much means dead people, okay? It's not that exciting, but they're cool because they're like zombies, but they're zombies who still kind of remember their own life, so they still have some intelligence, and you're fighting against them, but not all of them are the same. Like some have wings and some look like a half centipede bug person. But while you're fighting through the game against these, you run into that family again who was fighting and their daughter has bug eyes now, but it, I don't know why. And then you go back to playing the priest and then the Japanese girl and both of you are looking through like graves and magic stuff happens when you touch the graves. And then eventually the ending part comes when you find out that a portal is opening up and like, Things that look like, uh, I guess, gastrointestinal juice start showing up out of that portal. And the doctor, oh, I forgot, totally, there's a doctor in this game who's looking for a nurse. Um, well, he gets stabbed by one of them, and then they open up the portal fully, but the 18-year-old guy is able to stop it, but the priest wants it to be open, and then it ends with the 18-year-old guy wearing headphones and two shotguns and a samurai sword. I have no idea what I played. You see, Siren is survival horror meets stealth games, kind of like Metal Gear meets Silent Hill, but if Snake's gun never really killed anyone, and if he even got so much as close to somebody, he would die. Um, and also, he would be able to see through his enemy's eyes. Did I mention that? You can sight jack into the eyesight of other enemies. Yeah, uh, this review is turning into a more mixed up story than the actual story within the game. Okay, knowing everything you already heard about the game, 
Number one, your character is either a gaijin or a Japanese person. You are stuck on some sort of cursed island. Uh, number three, you are fighting creatures called shibito that are like semi-intelligent zombies. Number four, you can see through the eyes of these shibito. And five, sometimes you get guns or other weapons, but you never totally kill anything in the game because, well, the living dead never really stop living after they've died. Uh, let's try, and merely try to encapsulate what this horror game is about, what Siren is about. You see, you're a group of survivors, a film crew, a tourists, residents of this island named Hanyuda, multiple characters from all these groups, all on an island. During the current day, month and time you are there, a ritual is taking place which is attempting to stop a rift in our mortal world from opening that will turn the inhabitants into said Shibito and Yamibito. Oh, I forgot to mention what Yamibito are, but they're pretty much like Shibito but more creepy. Anywhere, they're somewhere between dead and living beings, as well as a blood god of death and destruction who will be also let loose upon the world and you watch an incredibly vague telling of the story from the confusing viewpoint of multiple characters through multiple stories which follow multiple timelines, all of which are playable episodes in multiple chapters that are completely nonlinear, making the whole plot and the story damn near impossible to follow. In fact, if someone in the comments right now flames me for being completely wrong and tells me the whole game was meant to be an analogy for mankind's lack of eco-friendly solutions and its blind eye toward conservation, I would say FML, SMH, you're right, I'm wrong, kill me now, end my channel. But I mean, really, that is the worst part of this game, is the horrible, vague, vapid story. The rest of it is just genius. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. If to you, beauty in a work of art is horrid, uh, disgusting, morbidly grotesque, uh, overwrought with depressing atmosphere, and uh, a very nihilistic style of hopelessness. Beauty, you know, right? This is from Keiichiro Toyama, the guy who worked for Silent Hill's team helped make the game super scary and then watched it slowly and gradually turn into an FPS that's a shooty shooty bang bang zero scares game, raised two middle fingers to the Silent Hill team, went off and said games aren't scary unless they leave you traumatized with its imagery and its sound and that is the best things about this game. Let's just take a glance at what scenarios and graphics made this series so scary. First off, Siren was one of the first games to use face mapping in 2D because let's be honest 3D mapping wasn't out yet until LA Noir. And during this time, what they would do is take a sort of polygon figure of a person and then photograph eight to 10 pictures of their face moving in different ways and map it over. Now, sometimes this led to some uncanny valleys to say the least. For example, somebody's face may open up too wide and it would slowly go over the form of the chin on the face. And then there's this. And this. And this. Look at me. Oh, you got one of those too, baby? Check it out. Ah, oh, it's so good to get out of that sweaty thing. Good God, put on some deodorant, boy. Look at me. Oh, hey there, girly, girly. Do you like a handsome chest face like me? I'm all handsome on this tummy, ain't I? How about playing as a defenseless little girl, running through an abandoned and decrepit hospital, while a nurse, with horrible cackling laughter and all the symptoms of Ebola virus, is walking around with more crooked gait than the ghost from Mama on meth? Yeah, uh... Yeah, this is unsettling. This is unsettling. I'm unsettled. I don't feel settled. This and this are the best aspects of Siren. They are so good, in fact, that they carry the tension, the fun, the empathy you have for these characters, and the interest you have for learning more of the lore of this island, its inhabitants, and every other aspect of this game as a whole. 
There's so many memorable aspects of this game that really I can't go into detail with each one of them. It makes it an individual, unique game that sets it aside from all the plethora of rushed horror games that come out these days. For example, some small things that I remember just off the top of my head are the fact that you could play a blind character who could sight jack into the creatures of the game to be able to navigate and your own seeing eye dog, which is totally bizarre, but totally an amazing, unique trait to begin with. On top of it, you've got monsters that don't just sit around stumbling and moaning and mumbling as they go through the game, but screaming and laughing manically while wildly running about, sometimes deforming and distorting and becoming these strange spider and insect shapes that you don't want to get anywhere close to your skin. It's disgusting. So while the story may get two thumbs down, Toyama's survival horror game gets two middle fingers up to the disposition of every horror game out there in its own unique way here on Unrest Play, a name I just made up right now for this show. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for giving this little show a chance. It's the first time I've ever tried this whole game review thing. If you liked what you saw here today, please like, comment, and subscribe so I know to make more of these. If you could also share this video, that would really help me if you would share it with sharing on shares and also share on a share site with sharing people who like to share. Did I mention you should share this? Because it would really, really help me out so much. Thank you.